Welcome back to the third stop of the Sport Fishing Championship. Stop three of 11 as we crown a champion at the end of our season and a $1 million prize, the any FMA Blue Water Tournament from St. Augustine, Florida. And again, they are already catching fish. Blue marlin, sailfish, many big fish to be had, but you're looking for that blue marlin, Ronnie. The catch points, they decrease as we go down in size of fish, but the variety we're looking for is that blue. Yeah, for the billfish category, these are the five species, blue marlin, white marlin, spearfish, sailfish, and swordfish. Like you said, each of them varying points. The blue marlin, obviously, the apex point total. And you saw at the bottom 100 bonus points for the first blue marlin of the event. You saw it last segment, Pez Vela coming across the board that first one of the tournament. And you can see the excitement, you can feel it within them, just how important that was, not only to get a blue marlin in 350, but that extra 100, it is, it is very key, and everybody calls in though, so maybe, maybe not, you can hear that radio communication, and if you hear somebody catches one before you, you know that they probably, possibly could have got that 100 point bonus. But look at our field, again, 24 boats took off, but there are eight boats with cameras on them. Team Half a Buck, last year's champion, didn't really run that far, Ronnie, to try and catch their first blue marlin of the tournament. Not a whole lot of action yet, but uh, we're trolling around in some pretty water, so gonna keep keep doing our best. No fish yet, but we're still hopeful. Just gonna keep giving it our best shot. See what happens. And you start clicking off the, the time they took off real early in the morning on day one. And five o'clock seems like so long ago. The sun's up, it's starting to work its way down. And I don't have anything on board. You start thinking about, I've got to change something up pretty quick. One thing we've noticed over the first two events though, Robbie, they're the winners of this event. It doesn't mean you have to catch them every single day. Some of these teams will have a low point in the day, but when we get over to Team Finicky, we'll see how they're doing this morning. Well, for the folks back home, we have a Mahi Mahi on the end of the line. He hit the short line and missed it, and then we were able to catch him on the short rigger. We found a, found a wee line, and uh, yeah, we got a fish. Oh, there's a mahi on the on the lure on the short rigger. I'll leave your skipping back there. He might still be around. Oh, there he is. There he comes. There he comes. There he comes. Oh, grasshopper! Oh, grasshopper! We're catching mahi mahis. Had a triple on. Making the best of it. How do you like that? Well, folks, we're still catching mahi mahis. <laughs> And catching mahi-mahi is very important, Ronnie, because we haven't even talked about the championship fish. The mahi-mahi point has not been set yet. We haven't seen that big mahi that could win $50,000 at the end of the year. Yeah, if you set that bar here, you're gonna have to maybe wait it out the rest of the season, or you could just top your own mark with a bigger mahi-mahi. But what we'll see is different areas out in the Atlantic where we'll target the mahi-mahi. You see the sargasm, that, that floating grass out there. That is not conducive to blue marlin and the billfish. Their eyesight is so good. If your bait is any kind of fouled up with that grass, you're not gonna get their attention. You're not gonna tease them. But the bait hangs around there. Those those mahi-mahi are the bait fish for those big, long billfish. So again, where there's one, there could be another. Finicky's hoping to find the blue marlin. As we take it over from Team Finicky over to Getty Up, kind of in a similar area, but not nearly as far. Growing up here in Jacksonville and St. Augustine, when I was a kid, the Blue Water was the tournament every year. It was what everyone looked forward to. It was our Super Bowl of offshore fishing here in Northeast Florida. So it's kind of cool here. I mean, looking at it as a kid that I'm running my own boat in this tournament now. And we love this tournament so much. It means a lot to us that we're actually here fishing our 39 front runner. We're not typically fishing an outboard boat in these tournaments, but we're gonna, we're gonna wing it this time. We didn't want to miss it. It's the 50th annual and we're trying to make it a good year. Great teaser! He's on the left lure! Reload it! Hey, hey, get the harness on, Hunter. Real hard. Can you pull my teaser in the boat? Wait, wait. I'm just gonna 
back up for a little bit. Hey, clear the transom of rods and the rocket get, get, launcher. Get, get, get everything out of the way hunter getty with a blue marlin that could be a 350 point fish you get it. it's going to be a fight till the end that fish was way out there Should be beer. <laughs> Pour it on his neck. Pour it on his neck. You need some neck water? Neck water. There you go. <laughs> okay. I think maybe we loosen the top ones and tighten the bottom ones on it. Beautiful. Loosen the top straps and tighten maybe the bottom. Maybe tighten the bottom ones. Whatever you think. I would say a couple hundred yards. Ronnie, he may not have a fighting chair, but he's got the fighting buddy program. Yeah, yeah every single crewmate has a certain responsibility in this one, making a, a, an adjustment based on how this blue marlin's fighting. If you're hooked up and it is not comfortable, it will wear you out even more than the fish itself would. I think the angle Yeah, drop it down here. Yeah, look at the strain the entire time, and you can hear it. And, and, and as Peter said many times, you, you don't want to winch down. You don't want to really crank on that fish. They tend to go deep, and this looks like a case where that fish said, I'm going down. Yeah, the fish looks like it has definitely went to the depths and it has made it a different fight. And we're also seeing a different kind of strategy over the first two events. We're seeing outboard boats. These guys aren't just dragging Small. the fish <laughs> around or backing up to them. They have different positions on the boat that they can move around to. And all of them are key to landing this blue marlin. That's a 39 foot front runner that they caught this big blue marlin on. Good job, Hunter. So we're sitting here, we're all chilling in the cockpit, and all of a sudden, Cap up top yells, left tees, left tees, everyone's going wild, just crushes the lure, got tight right away, made a couple few jumps, and then got tail wrapped, so it took a little longer than it should have, but got it to the boat, happy about this one. Push them away from the boat. Good job. Good job. High fives all around. Pez Vela on the board with the first blue marlin. Getty up with another blue. Day one action continues. We return to the Sport Fishing Championship on CBS Sports. We're there catching them here. The Sport Fishing Championship at St. Augustine, Florida. The NEFMA Blue Water Tournament. Robbie Floyd along with Ronnie Moore next to me. And we keep seeing these guys catch fish after fish, looking for that elusive blue marlin, and they are catching. Let's go on site with site one, St. Augustine, Florida. It's our host city this week, the third stop. But man, there is so much to see and do here. Yeah, the 50th anniversary of this NEFMA tournament here in St. Augustine. And why not have such an anniversary of a tournament in such a historical town like St. Augustine, one of the, if not the oldest city in America. And Robbie, it is to a T, a fishing, a port town. This is, it kind of embodies all of fishing, no matter where you want to do inland or the coastline where we are this week. This is the original, remember Paul Steon? Remember your history book saying he was looking for that fountain of yeah. youth? I don't know if he found it, but it, he thought he might have found it in St. Augustine, Florida, Flagler College. Plays host as well, this lighthouse, back in 1874, it was constructed. 
holds a maritime museum, a lot of things to do and see here in St. Augustine. Yeah, growing up in Florida, Robbie, I know all about St. Augustine and the aspect of going to the beaches and the tourist destinations, but it is a huge fishing town and it has a lot of history as well. You can spend three weeks here and do a week different thing. You can do a week of fishing, a week of sightseeing, and a week of vacationing. So we take it back out to Team Getty Up. You got to see one blue marlin earlier this morning, 350 points to them, and they are in the mix. Absolutely. Pez Vela caught the first blue that gave them an extra 100 100 points, but Getty Up catches the second blue of the tournament. You want to you want to know that they're out there, and I've got one on. It's early in the tournament. I can win this thing, but I need to keep catching these blues. It eliminates a lot of doubt in your mind, especially with the mileage that some of these teams are running. You run 50, 60, 70 miles out, you maybe can negotiate and navigate around, but if you run 150, 200 miles out, you may be stuck there until you make your way back in. Team Getty up on a 39-foot front runner. They made a long run in a smaller boat, but they're catching fish. This one is actually, I think, a qualifier. Oh, no. How big is that be for a qualifier? I think over 20 pounds. We're thinking this one might be 25. We'll see. Nice fish coming in right here. Oh, yeah, here. I see him right here. He's, Someone's not, right he's right not that. He's not that nice. Never mind. He's like 15. I know. I know. Hey, there's, a, there's two of them. Are, any, are either of them nice? No. I mean, there's been so many of them around, and there's been so many blue marlin around. Like, especially the smaller ones, a lot of guys have been seeing them eating the small mahi, like, throughout the, throughout the day. Yeah, like, he's he's a charter fisherman out of here. He fishes 200 days a year, and that's what he's been seeing this this season. So. It's Bull Dorado. Nice. Robbie, they may not be qualifiers for that championship division of fish over 20 pounds, but one thing that's positive is they said, where the Mahi Mahi have been, where the little ones have been, the big blue marlin, 350 points total, have been close by following. And they've proven it. They've already caught a blue marlin, similar areas, but you keep catching those Mahi. There's going to be blues around. That's why you got a guy as high as you can up there looking for those blues, chasing those Mahi Mahi. You have charter fishermen and they're on the boat with you and they're catching white marlin, blue marlin. How many white marlin did we see just down the road in the Dominican Republic a week ago? I mean, over a hundred white marlin. Here, the blues are probably going to be more prevalent. Yeah, a lot of different strategy when you're going for these smaller point total fish, the spear fish, the sword fish, and the cell fish, all 125 points and lesser. But those fish can also impact the leaderboard, Robbie. Some of these teams that have one blue marlin to their total, if you catch a sword, you catch a sail, maybe even a spear fish, it will kind of put you at edge above another team. Some guys will not want to go target these smaller pointed fish, but sailfish, they're in general areas and we're seeing these mahi mahi as well as the blue marlin. And again, every point counts towards the event and every point counts as catch points toward the overall big picture that will crown a champion in Puerto Rico in August. Pez Vela, we saw them with the first blue marlin on board. Again, we're showing you some of this footage done from their cell phones. Again, getting you every bit of coverage we can from on the water to you at home. About to find out in a second. Sailfish. Sailfish. Why are you? See him? Watch out, Danny. Not only do they go from Blue Marlin to Sailfish, Robbie, add in that 100 bonus points for Team Pez Vela, and this is how it adds up on the leaderboard. 350 for a Blue Marlin, 100 added to that for the first Blue Marlin, add that 75 in, now it's not a round number. 525 has them at an edge above the other teams like Team Getty Up. Now, it's not necessarily a race, but whoever crosses that finish line with the most points will be crowned our champion here at the Blue Water Tournament, and we still have plenty more ahead on CBS Sports. SFC coverage on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Sword Fishing Products, by Publix, and by Yugo Waterproof Products. A beautiful day for fishing here at the Sport Fishing Championship in St. Augustine, Florida. As that sailboat puts out, it is just kind of cruising along nice and easy while everything out there off the coast is going at it like crazy. 
here at the Blue Water Tournament. Pez Vela, as well as Getty Up, are our leaders right now here at the third stop of 11 of this championship season. Welcome inside our SFC studios. Inevitably, they're going to find the big fish. We've already seen blue marlin caught. We've seen a sailfish caught. It's good to see variety in the mix. Yes, for sure. And it's good to see teams already set their mark. You're worried about getting points for your catch points, which will get you your standings if you're in the top 20 of an event for the SFC Championship at the end of the year. So setting a mark and getting points already on day one, that's very key. But like you said, we're going to see a lot of different species come into play this week. Yeah, and Pez Vela catching that first fish of the tournament, the first blue marlin of the tournament, gives them an extra 100 points. Uh, Peter Miller, it's always Always important to get that first fish. Check that box. Now everybody else just trying to catch the big fish, the blues. You know, I always say that first pr fish brings so much levity to the team, the captain, the crew, and it just builds their confidence as to what they're doing. So when you run 300, 200, 300 miles, and you can catch that fish, you feel really good. You stick with your plan and you continue on. You forge forward, and hopefully you measured your fuel bladders properly, and you can get back into shore to turn in your release cards. And again, some of these boats making long runs, some big boats, some small boats. You got to have that game plan before you take off. And, and what was interesting to me is hearing some of these guys talking about how they were making that longer run to look for the mahi. Again, these are championship fish we're talking about. But as you said, where there's mahi, there may be the blue marlin. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is the spot you want to go to when you get to, to that edge, when you're out that far. Pez Vela is out there. And that's exactly the case with uh, Pez Vela. That first blue marlin on the board, you see the sailfish, 75 points. With that bonus, this kind of sets that tone. Now they're up there. It's everybody else's job to chase them, Ronnie. Yeah, and if they're only catching blue marlin for all of the other teams pursuing them, they're going to have to catch two blue marlin, which isn't always, it's easier said than done catching two of those beautiful species. Some of the teams catching one, set their mark. They'd have to now get beat by two blue marlin to lose that lead. And the variety that we've seen through our tournament so far, we've seen, what, 23 blue marlin caught in the Gulf at the first stop. We, in Punta Cana, it was white marlin. But also the, the species of sailfish. It could play a factor. You catch enough sailfish, all those points add up. Team Getty up. I mean, they're hammering down as well. You get a big fish on the line, any of our pillfish, they're worth points. Yeah, and Peter, when you talk about the sailfish, they might be only 75 points, but it's one of those species that you can catch a couple in a hurry and be able to stack points on it while you wait for that blue. You know, that's a good point. But you know what I like about this scene right here is that we can get a good release on a big marlin on this center console boat. You know, it's a cat hull boat, and they got a perfect picture, perfect release, and that's a really special moment. And they're ready to redeploy the baits and catch another one. And we heard the captains talking about the benefits of having this type of boat or that type of boat. They're out there searching for these fish as well, not just the billfish, the championship division fish, the mahi-mahi, the invincible boats, yellowfin tuna, the wahoo, because we'll get $50,000. Whoever has the biggest of each individual class at the end of the year gets an extra $50,000. We got to see that mark set for the first event in Louisiana, the Venice and Grand Isle Tournament Team Rising Suns, a 139-pound yellowfin tuna by Invincible Boats. Daniel Landry setting the mark there. Yes, he did, but that's not the only class. Let's talk about the Wahoo. It's a big Wahoo, Peter, 73.8 pounds. I mean, that, that's some good fishing right there. By Echevarria. She's got a go. beauty right there, and she's standing there posing with it. You know when you got a fish that comes up to your chin, that's a good-sized fish. Look, Mom, I caught a big one. Maricela Echevarria on Team Corrales doing that. But the one thing we've been missing is the mahi-mahi. We know they're out here. We know they're in each one of those stops, but nobody's had one of those big qualifying fish, over 20 pounds, at least none that were brought in. This was a weighed fish, and this is a 32-pounder from Contentment Blues. Congratulations, Reese Johnson, and we've got it on camera. Let's show you just how they caught this big mahi-mahi. It's a great way to recap day one. We saw the blue marlin. We saw some sailfish. We got to set the mark for a lot of teams points-wise, and now we're possibly setting the mark for this mahi-mahi division that will end up as a $50,000 cash prize. Again, they're out there in search for these blues, but there are plenty of big fish in the sea. typically get one shot at a nice mahi like that. You want to make it count. Oh. 
Great job by the entire crew there, and look at that bad boy. That could be a $50,000 fish. 32.4 pounds when they weighed her in. Somebody got the splatter paint on that one, but it just shows you the color and, and just how uh, alive and vibrant they were. And where there's one, there's generally others. That's why oftentimes when you catch a mahi-mahi, they leave it in the water for the other ones to come around. That's right. You get the male, the bull dolphin, which that one was, and you get the female dolphin. They're hanging out. They're pairing up. They're mating. They're doing their thing. They're having a good time. It's like a big nightclub out there. And then you might catch another set. So we catch them in sets a lot of times, and that's the good one. The bull is the one you want to get. And Robbie, we want to we want to kind of specify that a lot of teams have caught mahi mahi in the first few events, but to be a qualified one to set the bar, it has to be at least over 20 pounds. We've seen some close calls in the past events and in this St. Augustine event as well. And, and we've also talked about it, at Peter, the mahi mahi, the tuna, yellowfin tuna, maybe not that size, although the billfish may be going after stuff near that size. But these are all bait fish to the billfish, and that's what they're looking for. So again, you put yourself in that situation if the billfish are there if the sailfish or the the blue marlin if the sailfish are there the mahi mahi they're all counting towards something at the sport fishing championship coming up we're going to see a team we haven't seen just yet the defending champ ronnie yeah we would love to see half a buck maybe defend their title here in st augustine